Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, you are welcome in this place. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this session today. You are welcome in this place. You are welcome to come and speak to us today in the mighty name of Jesus. Can you say amen? Thank you for viewing and watching and being with me today. This is a glorious day uh, for the Lord. Hallelujah. Early this morning, uh, the Lord visited me. Uh, there was a, a visitation. I felt his hand upon my shoulder. Oh, and then he began to speak to me. Oh, in the name of Jesus. And he said, uh, when you die, that's when you live. Oh, listen to me, people of God. Listen to me. It's time to get serious with the Lord. It's time to cast away all of the care and the worry and the burdens and put them at the feet of Jesus. Oh, I am telling you today that if you want the presence of God, if you want revival of fires to come, hallelujah, then all of these things you need to do, hallelujah. Casting every care over on the Lord because he cares for you. Praise the name of the Lord. If you want a divine uh, visitation uh, from God, oh, praise God, then you've got to invite him to come. You've got to invite him to come. That atmosphere of, of praise, that atmosphere of worship, that atmosphere of humility has to be there in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this day. I thank you for your visitation this day. I thank you, Lord, for visiting your people this day, even through this video, Lord. Wherever, whatever country they may live in, Lord, uh, let them have uh, your, your presence with them. In Jesus' precious name, hallelujah, I ask for revival fires to spread throughout the earth and let your glory uh, fill the earth like the waters cover the sea. In the name of Jesus, in the precious name of Jesus, hallelujah. This message today has put more fire inside of me. And I pray that it puts more fire inside of you today. In the name of Jesus, because you are the one. You are the one that God is looking for. You are the one that God will use if you just allow him to use you. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to him, my precious Savior. I surrender all. There was another thing that the Lord spoke to me today when he came to visit me. And he said, forsake it all. Forsake it all. What's going on with you? What's going on with your family? What's going on in your body? What's going on in your finances? What's going on all around you, in your government, in your community? God said, forsake it all. It doesn't matter. What matters is the very presence of our mighty God, our Father, Abba Father. We cry out to you right now, Abba Father, uh, come into every uh, person's heart uh, that's listening today. Lord, if they are not saved, then I ask you to save them. If they need deliverance, I ask for deliverance. If they need uh, hope, give them hope. If they need peace, give them peace. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. 
So how does revival spread? How does the fire spread? It first starts inside of you that you have forsaken it all. That you have said, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Use me. Send me. Let me go. Hallelujah. I don't care about any pain. I don't want to think about the pain anymore. I don't want to think about the uh uh, abuse anymore. I don't want to think about the persecution anymore. I just want to think about you, Lord. I just want to think about you. Hallelujah. Forsake it all. If you don't remember anything else that I've said today, remember those words. Forsake it all. Because this carnal world, heaven and earth will pass away. But his word is eternal. And his, his presence in you is eternal. Hallelujah. Praise God forever and ever and ever. You know, I've just been in the word and thinking about revival. We're going to go to the book of Acts in just a few moments. Because that's a revival book. That is a revival book. And... Um, but I was thinking about the Welch Revival. Now, the Welch Revival began in 1904, and it ended in 1905. There was another one that was in the 1800s, but this one in particular, uh, I want just to speak about just for a moment. The man, Evans Roberts, he prayed for 13 years. The Lord would wake him up at one o'clock in the morning and he would get up and he would pray for four hours and then he would go back to sleep and he would sleep until nine o'clock in the morning and he would get up and he would pray again. I call that commitment. I call that surrender. I call that forsaking it all in the name of Jesus. You know, some people get so wound up and wrapped up in themselves uh, that they there's no place for Jesus. There's no place for the Holy Ghost. There's no place for revival to come into their hearts. You see, revival means that there's changes going on. We're being changed from glory to glory. There's changes going on in my life. I pray that there's changes going on in your life. Because if you're the same as you were yesterday, then you need to cry out for the presence of God. You see, that's what I did this morning. I cried out for the presence of God. I said, I need you, Lord. I love you, Lord. See, this revival... This Welch revival started with a young girl standing up. And all she said was, I love Jesus. That's all it took. God saw her heart. He heard her prayers. And he came. You see, the, the revival is the presence of Almighty God. It's when he comes to earth. When heaven invades earth, when God comes and walks among his people, that's revival. Oh, Lord, we thank you for revival. We thank you, Lord God. Revival is the response of the people to God. You see, they are, they're praying, they're worshiping, they're praising, hallelujah. And then the presence of God comes. God hears their cries and he comes, hallelujah. And then revival breaks out. And that is the response to God's presence. Are you responding to God's presence? Did you know that you can live in revival? You can live in his presence. You can walk in his presence. Hallelujah. Oh, he walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. Hallelujah. That's what he said to me today. 
He said, I belong to him. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus for a visitation from, from the very presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord, we want to see your viral fires spread throughout the nations. We want to see it spread throughout the earth, Lord. Oh, let your presence be manifested uh, in, in the the believers, Lord, and let us go uh, throughout the earth, throughout the nations, Lord. Oh, praising you, worshiping you, uh, inviting your presence to come in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to start with the word in uh, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 11. You say, oh, I know this scripture. Do you really? Do you really know this scripture? Oh, well, I, I've heard it before. If my people, which are called by my name, that's you, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, whoo, and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. That is revival, people. That is revival. You know, now see in this scripture right here, I see as we humble ourselves. And that's how I started this message today. Cast every care over on him because he cares for you. You cannot handle Sickness, disease, anxiety, pain, depression. You cannot handle any of that on your own. But when you yoke up with Jesus, praise the name of the Lord, then he takes over. And that's when revival is manifested in your life. Hallelujah. Another thing I saw in here is that when we pray, this man... Evan Roberts prayed for 13 years. He prayed in obedience to the Lord. He got up when the Lord said, get up. And he, and he prayed when God said to pray. Hallelujah. So I see that there's prayer that's earnest. Prayer that comes from the heart and from the gut. Hallelujah. Prayer uh, that is not just a ritualistic uh, prayer, but it's a prayer from the heart. Okay, let's read on. I see that we have to seek seek the presence of the Lord. Do you seek him today? Do you seek his presence? Are you wrapped up, tied up, bundled up in Jesus? Hallelujah. Are you wrapped up, tied up, in something else. Well, I've got a schedule. I've got a list. I've got to check off my list. You know, after this morning, I have no schedule. I have no list. Forsake it all. I'm telling you, over and over again, you're going to hear me say that today. Forsake it all. Because that's how we see in our lives the manifestation of revival. And that's how it spread. It spread through our humbleness before the Lord. It spreads through our prayers, hallelujah, from the heart. It spreads when we begin to seek the Lord. We begin to seek his kingdom. Oh, hallelujah, and his righteousness. And all of these things will be added unto us. We won't even need to ask for healing. We won't even need to ask for any finances. We won't even need to ask for uh, any deliverance. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. When we seek him, we shall find him. And he will come to us. And he will minister to us. And he will give us everything that we need. Are you hearing me today? Lord, let him hear me. In the name of Jesus. In 
the name of Jesus. And then what else do I see? I see repentance. I began to repent this morning. I began to ask the Lord to forgive me of anything that I have done that was not of faith, anything that was not pleasing unto him. Lord, I repent. I began to repent this morning. And he is so faithful to forgive us. He's so faithful to forgive us of any, any wrongdoing. It says, if you will turn from your wicked ways. What does that mean? Repentance means to turn. Repentance means to change your thinking, change your actions, change what you're doing. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. If you're not getting any results in this, I'm speaking this straight to me as well as I'm speaking it to you by the Spirit of God. If you're not getting any results with your prayers, then you're not praying the right thing. Woo! Lord, forgive me. Forsake it all. If you want to see the fires of revival spread up throughout the earth like the waters cover the sea, then you will forsake it all. Whew. I'm still going to Acts chapter, uh, the, the book of Acts uh, quickly here. And then look, it says, I, I see in this passage also forgiveness. That he's faithful to forgive. It says that he that we will he will hear us from heaven. Hallelujah. And he will forgive. And then, then that's when the healing of the land comes. Why? Why does the healing of the land come then? It's because of the presence of God. God begins to walk on the earth. God begins to manifest his presence in the earth, and that's when the healing comes. See, God is our healer. God is our healer. Say it with me. God is my healer. God is my healer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this passage right here is very critical for the spreading of revival fires. Now let's go over to the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, it starts out in chapter 1, where we see in verse 8, But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. If you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit today, I speak it over you right now. I release it uh, to come into you right now in the name of Jesus. I loose your tongues. Let that prayer language come forth now in the name of Jesus. Just begin to pray. Just let the Holy Spirit have your tongue. Praise the name of Jesus. Oh, praise God. Come, Holy Spirit. Let me receive your power after that, that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. That's that power. The power of the Holy Ghost coming on you in the name of Jesus. So I... I see some of you are shaking right now. Some of you are crying right now. Some of you are repenting right now. You're on your knees. I see you. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. I thank the Lord for this message. I thank the Lord that it's burning in my heart. I thank the Lord that he's manifesting himself in this session right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever you need from the Holy Spirit, uh, receive it now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Then in, in Acts chapter 2, we see that they are fulfilling 2 Chronicles 7, 14. They're doing it. They're in one room, in one accord. They are praising the Lord. And suddenly there comes a sound from heaven. A mighty rushing wind. Hallelujah. And God is sending and manifesting himself in that room. I don't know if I can sit still. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. He can manifest himself right there 
in your room, right there in your kitchen, right there, wherever you are, oh, in your car, wherever you are, God will manifest himself in the name of Jesus. And that's what happened. And they all spoke in tongues. And they were all filled with the fire of God. This was the starting of revival. This was the starting of revival. And then you see over in verse 14 that Peter stands up and he begins to preach with boldness and with power and with the anointing. Hallelujah. But you see, when the Lord visited me this morning, when my daddy visited me this morning, he said, it's not about preaching. It's not about teaching. It's all about the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. That's where it is. That's where revival is. Now, preaching is good. Teaching is good. Why do I come to you uh, uh, in these times? But it is when people forsake it all is when the Father shows up. Hallelujah. In verse 17, And it shall come to pass in those days, I'm talking about this is the starting of revival, and we're going to see revival spread throughout the book of Acts. Hallelujah. With salvations, uh, 3,000 on one day. Hallelujah. Uh, with people uh, falling dead because they lied to the Holy Ghost. Ooh, that's in chapter 3. Woo, praise God. And then you see uh, the, the miracles and the signs and wonders that begin to manifest themselves. The, the guy, oh, the man at the gate, beautiful, hallelujah, who had never walked. And all he did was look upon Peter and John, who were filled with fire, who were spreading the revival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says in verse 40, 41, Then they that were gladly received the word were baptized, and the same day they were added 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in breaking of bread and in prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then in chapter 3, uh, we see... The man at the gate, beautiful, get up. Well, he went walking and leaping and praising God into the temple. Hallelujah to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. And then verse 19, it says, repent. Repent, therefore, and be converted, and your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come. Don't you want to be refreshed? Don't you want to be energized and strengthened. Oh, hallelujah. Spread revival fires. And then we see in chapter 4 where Ananias and Sapphira lied to the Holy Ghost and they both fell dead. It's not good to lie to the Holy Ghost. Ooh, glory, 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 glory. Lord, we praise you. We praise you. And then we see in, in chapter, uh, let's go all the way uh, to uh, chapter uh, 8. Here we see revival fires spreading through Philip, the evangelist. And I want you just to look at this for just for a moment here. And it says in verse 5, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. He did not preach doctrine. He did not preach, well, you old dirty sinner. He did not preach, oh, well, you know, you need to, you old drunkard, you need to, to stop drinking alcohol. You need to uh, stop smoking those cigarettes. Uh, you need to stop uh, using drugs. Uh, you, oh, no, no, no. He preached Christ to them. And the people with one accord gave heed 
to those things that Philip spoke, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, listen to this, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with the palsy, and that, that were lame, and they were healed. And in verse 8, there was great joy in the city. Do you want to have great joy come on the inside of you? Then receive the fire of God. Receive revival. Receive healing in your land. It says there was great joy in the city. Why? Because of the manifestation of the presence of God. Forsake it all. Do you want it? I want it, Lord. I want it, Lord. He says, if you die, you live. If you die to yourself, if you die to your pain, if you die to your uh, lack, if you die uh, to any type of abuse, oh, if you die, then you live. Forsake it all. Hallelujah. And if we go through the book of Acts and the journey of Paul and we see revival fire spreading throughout the land and that's what he wants you to do. That's what he wants me to do. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I say, let it be. Let it be in your people, Lord. Let them have such a desire to be with you, that you will manifest yourself in, in our land. You will manifest yourself in the earth in the name of Jesus. And wherever it might be, you will manifest yourself. And we will see people come to the Lord into the kingdom. We will see people healed. We will see people uh, with miracles and healings. Lord, manifest yourself in the earth. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much for viewing today.